Looks like the title for the most reused bug that McFarlane is going to be releasing is in contention from the Hush model to now the Nightfall bug. As seen that we're getting quite a bit of releases and I figured that this is the perfect opportunity to make a ranking video. At least for the year of our lord 2024. Now before I get started on this ranking, I do have to note that yes, I know, Catman is technically a Nightfall utilization, but it's Catman. I'm sorry. He's not a Batman. He's not within this league. I'm sorry. If anything, I'll, I'll toss him a little bit of an honorable mention here, but I just didn't feel all that comfortable of putting him proper in the ranking within these five, these current five that are currently out there released and being able to be purchasable. I figured that this is probably the definitive group to then kind of swip and swap within set rankings as far as the type, top five Nightfall bugs of this version of Batman released thus far. And one other disclaimer is that I just cannot emphasize enough that this is my personal ranking. There's probably going to be some entries here, some opinions, some placements of said ranking that you're going to disagree with and that's okay. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys would put in your ranking in your order as far as the top five Nightfall Batmans that have been released thus far. I'm looking forward to reading them but so far this is my ranking that I'm going to start with probably the most obvious one that I think a lot of us are going to agree to place at dead last at number five and that's definitively bullseye batman i feel like this is the one that i'm mostly confident in in believing that a lot of you are going to agree with me because even though this is a really clever and pretty quirky utilization of the nightfall buck because this is a very fluid and very posable figure it's very definitively batman as far as the actual composition and assembly this is at the end of the day a gimmick figure utilized to mainly drive up that platinum chase collectability it's the fact that this is only found in predominantly warm walmart's when that great release or great uh i don't know what to call it the great flood of McFarlane Platinum Chases towards the middle to end of August where a bunch of Walmarts were being just overflown with Platinum Chases from this to the Lucius Fox to the Batman Beyond and this was kind of lumped in there with them because I know I found it right up there with that giant haul that was a massive $200 pull from Walmart. It's probably the most amount of money that I ever spent out of Walmart. This is also one of the figures to attribute the current switch or explanation that McFarlane had to give at New York Comic Con as far as what is a proper Platinum Chase and what's going to be the red Platinum Chase that is going to distinguish it as a brand new figure. I feel like this kind of falls in a weird gray area but beyond the collectability of hunting him down being a Platinum Chase it's just Nightfall Buck white with a few black accents on the face on the diaper piece and then of course the giant bullseyes on the front and on the back accessories are the same granted it's cool to see the quirky artwork on the card as well as on the back but outside of that it's nothing that you haven't really already messed with prior if you've already collected the nightfall body before so you're not really missing out on a whole lot here it's just a matter of whether or not you want to add this suit as far as like i said completing your collection if you're a total completionist this is exactly why you get the bullseye batman and that's why he is most certainly the one on the final slot as far as the ranking so with that obvious one out of the way let's get into some spicy territory at least spicy for me to you guys i don't know i don't know how some of you guys are going to react to this but i personally after thinking about it for a few days marinating on it a little bit in fourth place because from this point forward we start to get into some territory here where i just kept going and switching things around as far as preference as far as value proposition what you get in the box etc and i feel like in fourth place i arrived at the final destination of placing in that fourth rank the nightfall two pack yes because even though this scratched an, an awful lot of people's itches as far as their definitive nightfall batman since he's got the truer colors with the blue the darker gray the yellow, the way that the bat symbol is on there, and the cloth cape with the really strong wire to be able to pose it in a variety of ways. And he's got a good assortment of accessories. Granted, it only takes it up a notch from the traditional accessories you expect for a Nightfall Batman because all these guys come with their fists, their gripping hands, and the battering. Pretty standard issue. But the Nightfall 2-pack Batman here came with an added set of hand accessories that are supposed to be kind of like these 
agonizing and pain semi clenched hands to then favor not only the battle damage that he's got on his face with the blood and the grimace but also the scratches and the fact that he comes bundled in with Bane thus completing the imagery that is replicating the Nightfall cover. But when you strip that away, that's where my reasoning for him being placed in fourth kind of comes to fruition. Is the fact that he mainly just works because of the fact that he's in the two-pack. You know what I mean? Like, it's the fact that the battle damage mainly works because he comes with Bane. The hands uh, work because he comes with Bane and you could replicate that cover. If I was to, hypothetically speaking, say that this was a standalone release, if he came just by himself for $21.99, $22.99 up on the shelf at a Target or Walmart, I wouldn't gravitate towards it as much as I would in the other three figures that are within these five here. I wouldn't be a, the biggest fan, as I actually mentioned in that video, not the biggest fan that we get true definitive colors of the Nightfall Batman here with his color scheme, but they happen to be coupled with the battle damage and even though I really like the details of the blood I feel like they puffed up his face just a little bit too much you have again the battle damage with the scratches and the marks across the body and then as much as I appreciate the fabric cloth cape or, or rather the fabric nylon cape along with the really strong wire ever so often I do feel like it was tailored just a little bit too long that it just kind of drags up on the floor and becomes a little cumbersome to pose this figure should you want the cape to be in a much more neutral position like it is right now and like I said your only real way to access this figure is to get the Nightfall 2 pack which thankfully is now a bit more readily, readily available than it was earlier this year when it was just sold out but still those are the little factors that I had to weigh and think to myself that's probably where he fits most comfortable for me is at number four because you take those things away and he doesn't work as well as the other three that are coming up here. And number three is going to be a late addition to the collection but one that I'm kind of glad I waited on to make this video for because for a while I was thinking to myself should I wait? Should I do it now? Should I wait for those that Silver Age with Ace 2-pack or the Justice League Task Force since those are brand new editions but at the same time I'm like you know what five is a round number and this is the only one I'm going to wait on and that's going to be the Manga Batman which is a collector's edition entry and it is a little bit upcharged in that regard it's going for the whopping 30 bucks but because of that you get not only a pretty neat utilization of the Nightfall buck because even though like I said we've seen this body before I really dig this color scheme. I don't know what it is, but there's something about the novelty of it being a Batman lifted from a manga that was existing around the same time as the 66 show that someone in Japan took kind of like the initiative of making a manga out of. I mean, it kind of writes itself. Wouldn't you want a Batman manga? That would be sick. And the fact that McFarlane went as far as to take that version of Batman, a very obscure one that I frankly don't feel a lot of people talk about and make a figure out of it I'm like yo that's actually kind of dope and even though the mo most of the body is pretty much replicated the same way as all these other figures I like that they kind of rehauled a little bit of the bat symbol but it's not a stamp on it's not like the nightfall bug which is another thing that I kind of have to criticize the nightfall two-pack version is that the bat symbol I don't like that it's not an actual piece you can feel it's just a you know a paint app just stamped across right there whereas here it's once again another piece that's sculpted into the chest of the body itself you can actually feel and on top of that it's rehauled to look like it did in the manga apart from that and the color scheming you got that head sculpt which is just charming it's novel it's lifted from the manga and then on top of that it is a collector's edition so he's got the not only cool aesthetics to the card as far as the the reflective silver paint jobs and the accents as well as the stand to prop it up even though I know a lot of you don't really care for the card stands but at the same time I kind of dig the collectability I also dig furthermore that they it doesn't feel like they used AI for that description on the back of the card it legitimately feels like someone wrote wrote it so I have to commend them that even though that should probably be a standard practice at this point but apart from that you got some nifty accessories though a couple of them I feel are just kind of tossed in there save for the battering I like how unique and oversized and exaggerated this battering is but on top of that it's also the grapple hook with a legitimate rope an actual rope that you can tether and pull and string together and it's quality I like the fact that it's not just a bendy wire it's not just a rubberized piece of plastic it's like okay an actual rope and I'm kind of hoping that going forward a lot of other collector's edition figures that utilize some kind of grapple hook or some kind of 
uh, um, lasso in the case of Wonder Woman we keep utilizing those actual fabric felt materials to use something like that instead of simulating the look via, via rubber or some kind of dingly wire that's just then coated in rubber or coated in plastic I actually appreciate the utilization of an actual string rope so that's dope and so including all these things along with of course an assortment of hands including a pointing hand and this like charming kind of semi triggered hand I don't know all these things bundle it together, that's when an awful lot of the value proposition kind of kicked this guy up a couple notches within the ranking. But it's the fact that I had a smile on my face just kind of looking at the head sculpt and looking at the way that I was posing this guy with those different hands and the color scheming that just kind of won me over in the long run and made me go, you know what, yes, I understand that I kind of got this guy a little late in the party and at a very hefty discount that's actually one of the reasons why is i was kind of waiting to see if he was going to go on sale and sure enough he was best buy had him for like 21 dollars instead of the full 30. i had a 10 dollars certificate cut it even further down to about 11 12 bucks and i was like you know what this is the perfect opportunity to pull the trigger and i'm glad i did because he managed to sneak in at the number three spot and i feel like this guy personally he's getting kind of slept on so now we get to the ultimate battle because we only got two spots left and lo and behold it looks like the last two left to cover are probably the more definitive Nightfall Batman that I think everyone can look at and go yep it's definitively between these two as far as the ultimate bracket fight bracket battle in terms of who is considered your definitive Batman. Like if you were to only have one spot on your shelf for a Nightfall Batman and you can't put any others up on that shelf and you have to reserve the rest of your space for other incarnations of the character from different comic book periods, movie properties, video game lifts, etc. Which is your Nightfall Batman? And I think almost 80 to 90% of McFarlane collectors are going to look at these last two. And so now I have to decide who is my number two and who is my number one blue and gray or I should say blue and light gray or black and dark gray and ultimately I went with number two the blue and gray yeah I know that this is where we start to sink into a little bit of personal preference but this is my number two. Ultimately, these are both neck and neck because they're all, they're like 90% identical in terms of the sculpting of the bat symbol, the body, the accessories even. It's frankly the exact same figure. I mean, what are we even talking about? In fact, let me just grab both and just kind of show them off here next to each other. At number two is the blue and gray, and at number one is the black and gray. And it just really boils down to personal preference because when I think of this color scheming, I initially think of like the 1970s comic arc where I understand that there there was a period in time where that was his default color scheme, but I'm just a sucker for having my Dark Knight in the darkest scheme possible, whether it be black and gray, all black, like a muted jet black color, some kind of smoky uh, kind of approach to the overall ensemble. I don't know. Is I'm always favoring the darker colors and having the blue. Uh, I'm sorry, having the yellow be just a little darker, a little bit more mustardy within the bat symbol as well as the belt. That's really what it boils down to. As well as, like I mentioned in that YouTube short when I covered this guy, is it just me or is the mouth plate just a little darker? I don't know what it is, but I feel like it just complements the entire ensemble just a little better. But apart from that, again, it's identically the exact same figure. Really well as far as posability, as far as the fluidity of the body, of the joint, of all these things. I just really do like the Nightfall Buck overall. But if I really had to designate a definitive Nightfall Batman up on the shelf that I can't have anywhere else and I can't have repetitions as far as that placement in the shelf within the, this ranking... It really does boil down to this guy being my definitive number one Nightfall Buck. And then at number two is going to be that blue version that initially got released. And there you have it. My personal ranking of the Nightfall Buck from McFarlane Toys in 2024, at least late 2024. Should that change when we finally get the Silver Age version? Because I can definitely tell from those promo photos that it's the exact same Buck again. This time he's got Ace with him. A couple of more accessories. The Cloud Cape once more. And then from what I can tell, we got that Justice League Task Force Dark Side build a figure wave. And for that Batman, it looks like they're utilizing the buck once more. So I feel like maybe this time next year, we're probably going to be due for another ranking video. Just like probably around the summertime, we're going to be due for another Hush Buck video because 
Even though it's been quite a while since we had Hush releases, hey, we just got word that they're utilizing it again for that King Kong crossover, whatever the f*** that crossover is. I don't know what McFarlane is thinking. I don't know if he's doing this to fulfill some kind of obligation, but tossed in that two-pack, it's going to be the Hush Buck again, so I don't know if I'm... <laughs> I legitimately do not know if I'm going to pick that guy up, but if he's still using the Hush Buck for purposes and bundles and crossovers like that, Who's to say that entering 2025, we're going to get a couple more Hush Bucks and then we're going to get probably some more releases of the Nightfall Buck outside of the two that I just mentioned. So God forbid, this time next year, we're going to get an additional five and then we're probably going to do a top 10 ranking of the Nightfall Buck. Who knows? But I feel like right now it's a perfect opportunity to kind of swip and swap these, these five across. Maybe next year I'll bring Catman in for the competition. And maybe if there's some other hush books out there that I forgot to mention in this video, don't hesitate to let them know in the comment section below. And while the, you're down there, give me your personal top five ranking of the Nightfall Buck, whether it be within these five, if you want to include Catman, what are your predictions for upcoming releases that are be, going to be utilizing the body, such as the Silver Age or the Justice League Task Force version, or if there's any kind of wish list you have for McFarlane to utilize this buck for. Let me know down below and while you guys are down there, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this ranking, thumbs down if you did not. As always, appreciate the supporters and the executive producers that are keeping the content going at the level 2 tier, Tom Bowling. And in the meantime, stay humble, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.